but this exactly this problem was my calling and i i had set out to solve this problem as a phd student so i thought i better uh i might as well just do exactly that even though this might take a lot of time and and uh, make me suffer mentally Bardini wrote about 4000 rules in his grammar of sanskrit what are these 4000 rules together supposed to do they're supposed to help us derive any word and subsequently any sentence of sanskrit correctly let's say we want to derive the word uh, definition we're going to start with the base or the root here which is define right and then we're going to add asian now you must have noticed that if you just put define and asian together you get defination but that's not actually the the correct pronunciation you have to make certain sound changes the correct pronunciation is definition so certain vowels undergo change basically now uh, how does that happen so in panini's grammar what he does is he teaches rules for such sound changes precisely for such sound changes and you rule apply one rule at a time so one sound is changed at a time and eventually the idea is that you get the correct answer which is definition now the problem is though at certain points in the derivation two rules become simultaneously applicable we call this situation rule conflict as in there's rule, there's conflict between these two rules and only one of them can win well he started as many meta rules only one dealing with rule conflict but what is a meta rule a meta rule is a rule that that gives you instruction about the big stuff the broader organization how to interpret rules how rules interact with each other and so on and so forth so he started as only one meta rule to tackle this problem of rule conflict that meta rule was misunderstood uh, by essentially everyone in the tradition starting with the very first commentators all the way up to un- up to up to now shall we say or until very recently the meta rule in question is 142 vipratishede param karyam just just ignore everything else just focus on the word para for a bit what does para mean in sanskrit it means that which follows the other or that which comes after the other as opposed to purva which which means that comes before that which comes before the other or that which precedes the other now the tradition interpreted para as that which comes after the other in the serial order of rules of the ashtadhyayi so we've got rule number 1 to all the way rule number about 3 9 8 5 something like that right rule number 10 will defeat rule number 4 rule number 6 will defeat rule number 5 you know what i'm saying so if the rule comes later in the serial order then that rule wins that was the interpretation but if you use that interpretation to solve these rule conflicts you often got incorrect answers at the end of the derivation but that that defeats the very idea and purpose of a machine so how how on earth is this a machine if it's giving us so many grammatically incorrect outcomes right and that's the question i i started asking uh the, the rule 142 basically i reinterpreted it as that which comes after of course now para is still that which comes after or that which follows the other but in what context going from left to right within a word so for example in uh, def- define plus asian assume one rule is applicable to define and the other rule is applicable to asian what you do is go from left to right and asian is on the right hand side so the rule that is applicable to asian wins so and then once i did that i realized that that doing this gives us grammatically correct forms automatically you know and so the system starts working well so para actually meant go that which comes after in the left to right context within a word not top to bottom context in the a serial order of rules yeah. you know so the, it is just that correctly interpreting the word that that really that really was the the meat of the matter if you will the biggest challenge was the first 9 months where i couldn't find a thing i mean i couldn't really make any progress 
was trying different approaches, trying different methods, seeing what I could do differently every day from what I had done the previous day. And I was doing exactly the same thing over and over. It was a repetitive cycle of failure and disappointment and gloom eventually. So I, go, I, I went back to the department begrudgingly after a month. I stepped into the graduate room where my books, uh, I'd left my books. And uh, I picked up the, uh, the first notebook, that, the one on the top of the pile, essentially. That one had all the derivations written by me in hand. And as I flipped the pages, I started observing a pattern almost immediately or within minutes at best. It was always a right-hand side rule that was winning the conflict. So essentially, for the first time, we will be able to teach the computer how to produce Sanskrit sentences using Pani's grammar, produce human speech essentially in the Sanskrit language, because the, the subject language of this grammar happens to be Sanskrit. If this is successfully done, that this would be a great milestone, not just uh, in India's intellectual history, uh, but also in the history of human interaction with machines, more generally speaking.